Nancy. Um, so I'm going to be helping with the Docker setup today. Uh, so to give you an overview, I'm going to be giving a high-level introduction. Um, kind of, you know, we've talked a lot about Docker and containers um, before. I'm just going to kind of reiterate that um, uh, and and sh tell you why we're going to be using it in particular. Um, but I'm going to be talking about the basics of building an image yourself. Um, but luckily, Eshin has actually done all of that work for us. So what we're really going to be doing is just pulling an image from Docker Hub. Um, and that is, that might take a while, depending on how many of us are going to be pulling that image at the same time. Um, so I'm going to show you two demos. It's um, just reiterating what um, Jen and Basiki talked about with the Jupyter Notebooks and Jupyter Lab, and I'm going to show you how to run that within the container. Um, and then I'm going to show you this cool feature that PyCharm has. Um, I don't know if many people are familiar with PyCharm, but I really like using it. Um, and there's the Docker integration feature where you can actually set a container as a remote interpreter. Um, so I'll show you how to do that. Um, and then that's not going to take too long. Um, hopefully, as we walk out of here, everybody has Docker on their um, their computers, and they can have they can run the container. So um, at the end, we're going to come around and try to help with your specific setup. So how do we get started? First, you want to install Docker. Um, has anybody started doing this yet? Um, yeah? OK. If not, um, follow the instructions. Um, I sent the link in the, in the Slack channel, um, in the tutorial channel. Um, just follow those instructions um, and set up Docker, uh, like install whatever is appropriate for your computer. So get that process started. That might take a while. That might be another rate limiting step here. Um, so while I'm, you know, giving the high-level overview, uh, that would be great if that was running in the background. Okay. So what is Docker? It's a tool designed to make it easier to create, deploy, and run applications by using containers. So it's a lot of words. What does that really mean? It means that it allows you to create computing environments that can be replicated on most modern computers. And that's that idea of portability that um, Yarek was mentioning earlier. Uh, you take any piece of software and you can run it on you know, pretty much any computer the way that it was supposed to run. So why are we using it? Um, obviously, like we want to create a shareable computing environment so that everybody can have access to these same tools. But there are many reasons why um, scientists in general would want to use it. For data collection, it would make um, experiments very easy to replicate, and you could um, uh, collect data from anywhere on many different computers. From the analysis standpoint, um, you can create a pipeline with all the necessary code and the dependencies uh, to replicate figures. Um, and potentially, you could replicate an entire paper um, using a container. Um, and then replication, not only replicating somebody else's work, but also rep like we were talking about, like sometimes we come back to a project three months later, um, you've installed something and it's not compatible anymore and yeah, you, you can't run anything and you're kind of hosed. So um, just even replicating your past work, you know, it's, it's really a, a great tool. So and, and all of this happens without having to reinstall or install anything locally. Okay, so to build your own, you um, could follow the tutorial that's uh, outlined in the README on the GitHub page, uh, but it really boils down to three steps. So first you make a Docker file, which is really just a text file. Then you build an image from that Docker file, and then you run a container from that image. Okay, so a Docker file, this is um, the set of instructions just to build the image. And it really is just a text file. So this Docker file is 14 lines long. Um, and what I want to point to here is this um, from statement at the top. This is uh, uh, called a base image. And basically, it's like a Docker approved uh, pre-built image. So you can, uh, you can use, and like, the rest of this is just layers on top of that base image. And you can explore other base images that Docker provides um, at this link. And then 
once you uh, have the Docker file, if you just navigate into that folder that contains the Docker file, um, and then in terminal, you can uh, run this command. So it would be Docker, build, and then dash T, and then whatever you want to name it. The convention is usually to um, name the image uh, with using uh, uh, lowercase letters. Um, and then this denotes this folder. Uh, sometimes that might take like a couple of minutes, but once you're done with that, um, you can run a container using uh, this command, so docker run. This uh, dash it runs it interactively, and then you assign a port, and then you name the container, and usually like the convention is the uppercase of whatever you've named the, the image. Um, I don't know what that's from, but that's the, the model that I usually follow. And then you create a mount point, so in this case it's mounted to the desktop, um, and then you reference the image. And that is really it. And then once you, you exit the container, you can always open it again with this docker start and then the same container name, and then you uh, attach your terminal to it. And so all of this um, and a couple of other commands are found in the GitHub repo. Um, so you can check out any other useful commands that you uh, you might want to use here. Okay, so for us, hopefully we've installed Docker at this point. Can you raise your hand? Yes, uh, I sent a link, it's to the Mine 2008 repo, but I can post them again to the 2000, 2018. oh, 2018, sorry, 2018, <laughs> not 2008, um, yeah. Then I can I can post it again to the 2019 repo. Um, but show of hands, who has Docker installed on your computer already? Great, great. Okay, so and uh, raise your hand if you've already pulled this image. Great. Okay, so it might take a little while if we're all pulling at the same time. But um, so uh, you can once you launch Docker. Do, does everybody know what it looks like once you've launched Docker? If you've launched Docker, you've got this little whale at the top, at least for Macs, I don't know, for, for Windows. Um, so you launch Docker, and then you can uh, run this command, just open terminal, run docker pull, and then ejolly, uh, and then mine tools. And that might take a while. That might be another rate limiting step, depending. Is it taking a while? Is, yeah, okay. Do you ever feel like it's excessive to use a Docker instead of just like Instead of a virtual environment or something like yeah. that? Yeah, so um, I think it's best practice probably to use a, uh, like a virtual environment is just like, it, it just encapsulates your like Python dependencies, but if you want something, like if you think that the operating system is going to be like unstable, then it would probably be useful to, to use Docker. But yeah, I mean, sometimes I feel like maybe this is overkill, I don't know. <laughs> okay, so. Um, it sounds like we're still in the install, or the, um, the pulling the image phase. Is that correct? Show of hands if you're still in the process of pulling the image. Great, okay. It's gonna take a little while, yeah. Um, not so far. That's good. <laughs> I know that there is a Windows user. Yeah, it's not gonna work. Okay. Okay. I remember there was a Windows 10 issue last year, and I can't remember what he did for that. He's yeah, he's gonna have problems. Um, okay. Well, once you have pulled the image, you run the container using this command. So the same command that I just showed, but. Um, the things that are different is uh, the reference to the image is different, um, and then naming it is different. Yeah. Yeah, it's in the um, it's in the 2018 Mind folder. So I, I posted that link um, in Slack. Um, but I also changed the. What is it? Yeah, I can put this command in Slack. I'm, I'm posting this in Slack. Oops, that's not our Slack. And 
And again, this is like the, the mount point, so I changed it to a different um, folder on my desktop, but I'll take this away so that it just goes right to your desktop. Um, no, it's just like it's it it uh, it just it's like referencing your desktop. I don't know. I don't know how best to say that. Is this supposed to be a colon in that task? What? In the class you just put up here, there's like a colon, like a desktop colon slash MNC. I was just wondering what the colon is. That I I, I that's just like the the mount convention convention so for. What it says. Okay, and so uh, how far into the polling is, is it still, it's still taking a while? Okay, so, great. Um, so the next thing I just want to show you is um, how to, is it, is it okay? No. Um, so the commands that we've just run, docker pull, ejolly, mine tools, right? The uh, next command is mounting, or just running the container and mounting it to this mine 19 tutorial. So I'm gonna run that. Um, when you see this root prefix, that means that you're running the container. Um, and then Eshin has made some aliases. So uh, if you do JP here, then that's going to um, open a Jupyter notebook. Yes. No, 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 no. You, well, so I, so yes, I, I put, I took that away and just made it desktop for you guys, but otherwise, yeah, you would have to make it. Um, and then if you go to your browser and you go to localhost 9999, um, so this is within that, um, that folder that I have on my desktop in the mind 19 folder. Um, so I can open up a notebook, and this is um, opening this up in the container. And then you can run whatever you want. So I'm not going to go too in-depth with the, the Jupyter notebooks, because Jen and Busy, he just did that. Um, but then if you do JL instead of JP, that opens up Jupyter Lab. OK, so the next thing I want to show you is PyCharm. Um, and I think that PyCharm, I don't know, I never really used MATLAB, but I could imagine that this would be a good jumping off place from MATLAB to Python. Um, it, it has a really powerful debugger, um, and it's like the nice GUI and stuff, so I think that that might be um, useful. Um, and I just like it. So, um, uh, and it has this Docker integration feature, um, but only for the professional edition, which is kind of annoying because it you do have to pay for it um, unless you have an EDU um, email. So if you're affiliated with the university, you don't have to pay for it, but it's just a caveat. Um, so it's an IDE, so it's an integrated development environment, and it's meant for developing uh, programs and, and software. Um, but it's also, you know, if you just need to debug something, it's really great. Um, and then there's another PyCharm tutorial that uh, we have in our CDL tutorials. So if you want to check out like a PyCharm exclusive tutorial, um, you can look for that. Look for it there. Um, so if you, so I've got PyCharm open here. Um, the first thing I want to show you is how to. Um, view all of your Docker containers and images within PyCharm, which is a pretty nice feature. So um, if you go to View, Tools, and Wit Tool Windows, and go down to Docker, oops, I just closed it. Um, then you can see over here all of the containers that you have. And so these are the ones that are running right now. So the mind one is running. And then you can see all the images that you've 
built below that. So it's kind of a nice um, interface for seeing all of the different containers that you have going. Um, and then the way that you uh, use a container as a remote interpreter is going to preferences and then you set your project interpreter um, and you can you can uh, choose whichever interpreter you want and that includes uh, docker container or images basically so um, so I'm going to choose Eshin's um, uh, image here as my default for my my interpreter and so now I can run this within the container so just to show you briefly what debugging looks like. Um, this is, I think, the most useful part of PyCharm. Um, let's say I've got this for loop and I've got this function that just this added function adds for to whatever um, it's iterating through. So um, the way that you would debug it is you go run and then debug, example debug. I've set a breakpoint here um, at this print statement so that I can walk through this add it function. Um, the way that I walk through that is um, with this button here. So I'm going to step into that function. And this is nice because then you can change any of the variables that you have um, at this uh, within the function. So like right now, i is equal to uh, 0. Oops. Nope, it's x. Just kidding. So, but we can change that. So we could change it to like three, let's say. And then I'm going to walk back out of the function. And now if I, um, that's going to print whatever I had to find within that function plus four, so seven. So it's, it's super useful. I mean, like I cannot stress this enough. Like I really like PyCharm here. Um, any questions on anything? How's it going with the downloading? <laughs> Great. <laughs> yeah, do you have a question? Yeah, it, so just uh, if, if anybody else is on Windows 10 at home, there are some issues with installing Docker, and I'm trying to see if I can. OK. Yeah, I think that we, we had a couple of people that were using Windows last year, and I'm pretty sure that we figured out a way of doing it, but I cannot remember some, what the fix was. Windows, I it out. OK. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So like if you type debug in the function name, you can go through line by line. So yeah, you can do that with Python, Python too. Yeah, okay. there's a, yeah. It's just not, I mean, this is nice because you can like step in it and it's got like the GUI, I don't know, it's just, it feels cleaner. I don't know, I like it. But. Any other questions? Does anybody need help, like hands-on help? No, we're just waiting on stuff. Well, Jeremy, do you want to go for it or? Oh, yeah, Paxton, sorry. I'm jumping the gun, sorry. Yes, you can, definitely. Um, so that is another really nice feature of PyCharm. Um, so you can see all of the packages that like this um, container has, like, or this image has. Um, so you can you can manage it and you can see them all laid out very nicely like this. Like you don't have to do pip freeze or anything like that. Like you can see everything. Yeah. Um, say it one more time. What, did you mean PyCharm or for? Oh, you don't you don't need PyCharm. No, this is just I'm, I was just showing. A, a cool tool that I think is nice. Yeah. Quite sure more PyCharm. More PyCharm? <laughs> more PyCharm. 